Never a doubt. Never a doubt. You can go back through all my videos. You guys tried to tell me that the Saints had no chance against the Patriots. You told me that they were washed. You guys tried to tell me this game was going to be 3-2. to two. Joke's on you. We won 34 to nothing. I mean, it's just going to be an absolute snooze fest. Let's talk about this mid-off that is going to be... Wait, hold on. It's not even a mid-off. It's like a below mid-off. In all seriousness, though, this win was awesome. The Saints bounced back in a huge way. It was awesome for them. They needed this win badly. And it felt like a must-win game. And they were able to pull through and not just win, but win confidently. Um, and we're going to be talking about that today. Yes, I know I'm a little late on posting this video. So what? Um, I, had s <laughs> I had stuff to take care of, but... It's better to get it out a day late than never. So um, welcome back to the Hoodouts Pod. I'm Kane Janish, your host. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. We just hit 1,000 subscribers. I appreciate all of your support. And just continue to show support so I can continue to put out content for you guys. That way it's a back and forth uh, situation. So uh, let's talk about the Saints and Patriots game. Man, it was awesome. Despite what you guys try to tell me. Um, it was an awesome game. Um, I thought it was going to be really boring at first. It started off really boring. But was it the Saints got to like midfield and then punted? Then the punters, then the Patriots punter punted like 20 yards. And the Saints got actually ended up losing yards. So they couldn't kick a field goal. And then they punted. And then Tyron Matthew comes to save the day with the pick six and just energizes the whole team. Uh, we'll get into the defense. But this is the first time the Patriots have been shut out at home since 1969 and i believe it's their biggest shutout they've had in franchise history it's kind of a big deal and you can give me the whole oh the patriots you know, like suck ass well <laughs> so do we no i'm just kidding but um any coach any team that has bill belichick as their head coach is probably somewhat going to be competitive in some way shape or form no matter who's on that roster and for the saints to come into Gillette Stadium, Gillette Stadium, I don't know how you say it. To come into Foxborough on a road game off of a really, probably one of the worst losses they've suffered in the past two seasons and win 34-0, to you can't really complain too much about that. It's a win. It's awesome. The Saints get the victory, and a big part of that victory was the offense being able to score more than one touchdown. So let's talk about the offense. Pete Carmichael, we'll give him his props. We'll give him a nice small round of applause he did he did a better job but i wouldn't buy in quite yet we saw last year the saints went into the raiders game with a must-win game after losing to what was it the cardinals and the Bengals very badly and then they went 24 to 0 Derek carr part of both games um <laughs> i'm just kidding i love Derek carr but they come into this game feeling like a must-win game after off of a really bad loss Pete carmichael Comes out, does things like creativity better, motion plays better, play action, and all that. He gets the game and scheme involved better. Last season against the Raiders, they had a really bad game. Comes in and kind of just does everything better in the right way. I wouldn't buy in, but it is nice to see that this offense can come to life when it has to. Or it can come to life. We've seen a spark of it. Now we just can't let Pete Carmichael get in the way of stopping that. He needs to get not get in the way of himself from calling good plays. He needs to continue to be consistent. Yeah, you called a great game. Well, guess what? Like Drake has one good song on that album. So that he just dropped. Don't be like a one-hit wonder like every 10 weeks or whatever. Be consistent. It's okay to have the occasional bad game or the bad uh bad week. Everyone has those. Drew Brees had those. Sean Payton has those. Marshawn Lattimore had those. Has those whatever. It's going to happen in this NFL, any sports, you're going to have a bad game. But be more consistently good than you are consistently bad. Be able to get your guys into better positions. Set them, set up your guys for success. He did that this week. Good job. Now do it again this week against the Texans. And I'll actually believe that this offense can... I'll believe that he has changed and that this offense can get going if we are able to score 20 points... Or more, if we can score more than 21 points this week against the Texans and next week against the Jags on a short week, I'll believe it if we can score 21 or more points in those two games. Texans are a very well coached defensive team. They might not have like super big stars or whatever, but they have D'Amico Ryan, who's a really good defensive coach. And the Jaguars, 
or like defensively, I don't know too much about their coaches. We're not going to talk about that, but their defense is solid. They just held the Bills to what, like 14 points? I'd say that's a pretty good accomplishment. So, P. Carmichael, good job this week. Keep it going. Keep it going. Your ass was on the line this week. Your ass is still on the line. You're up. He's still back. He's back. His back is still up against the wall, even though he called a good game. If he comes out and has a bad game this week and on a short week, sucks against Jacksonville, that's a perfect time to release him or demote him or switch roles with Ronald Curry because now you have 11 days to figure it out. You lose Thursday, for example. Friday and Saturday, you figure it out. Hey, Pete, you got to go. Sunday, you're ready to start game planning for the Colts as Ronald Curry as your offensive coordinator. So his ass is still, he's still in the hot seat. But... He came out here against the Patriots and called a good game. I'll give him that. Uh, the red zone offensively went three for three. They had four red zone trips with that fourth one. They took a knee. It was the end of the game. So that doesn't count. Three for three. Good job. We finally got touchdowns in the red zone. Outstanding. We finally got a game over 20 points. Outstanding. This is what the first time since the Cardinals game last year, the Saints have scored 30 or more points. The last time the Saints won a game scoring 30 or more points was the Seahawks game last season when Taysom Hill basically put the whole fucking city on his back and scored, what, four touchdowns and blocked a punt? So it was nice to finally be able to score more than 30 points and win, not 18 to 19. Um, Yeah, I thought overall, though, Pete Carmichael, I know Nick Underhill and the reporters were giving him a lot of heat and a lot of shit for in questions about why aren't you using motion, why aren't you using play action, why aren't you getting these guys involved? He had he did a good job this week. I believe they used motion on about like 25, 20% of their plays. Credit to New Orleans that football for that stat. So motion is good. But do it again next week. Be better at it. I thought the plays he called were better. They allowed guys like Michael Thomas finally to go over the middle and catch slants. Like let these players do what they do best. He set them up for success. He did a really good job. He allowed Alvin to catch passes outside, not just on like um, check down, like behind the line of scrimmage. And you saw Alvin kind of not super far downfield on like Texas routes, not yet, but you saw him out there not just doing what he did last week against Tampa Bay. So props to Pete Carmichael for putting together a offensive game plan that actually works. Is there anything else? Oh, so we're still talking about Pete Carmichael. Second half. You're up 21, 24, 0. I get one to be more conservative. But did you not see what happened two weeks ago in Green Bay? Like, I don't know. I feel like I'd still want to get a touchdown. I felt also, too, he's running Alvin Kamara up the middle too much. Like, you also have Kendra Miller and Taysom Hill for that. Don't run Alvin Kamara 15 times up the middle and the other seven be outside. Like, you can let Alvin Kamara get a breather every once in a while. So... First half, I thought it was good. Second half, I thought he got way too conservative. I get trying to run off the clock. And it worked to run off the clock, waste time and all that. But I think we only got like two first downs in the third quarter. We had a three and out. So he does need to be consistently better. But I guess if you're up 24-0 and your defense is... And the Patriots have no sign of life on offense, I guess it works. But I don't know. I still feel like maybe get Kendra Miller more involved at the middle. Alvin Kamara, keep him fresh don't give him the ball 25 times a game like up the middle he had 25 total touches 22 of them were carries um so we'll have to look and see how many were like up the middle but and alvin Kamara can run up the middle i'm not saying he can't but you want to keep alvin Kamara fresh and speaking of the running backs alvin Kamara and kendra miller it feels like the saints are still looking for an offensive identity but i think what they want to be is not a ground and pound running offense but i think what they want to be similar to what the 2017 saints were uh i'd say 2017 breeze is definitely better without a doubt than 2023 Derek carr but i think their range of being able to throw the football is probably similar um drew definitely got the ball out faster that's for sure but i feel they can probably hit the deeper passes when they can hit the middle and then obviously the checkdowns but that 2017 offense for the Saints relied on Alvin Kamara 
in the short passing game over the middle stuff runs outside mark ingram did the dirty work when jamal williams comes back jamal williams and kendra miller can do the dirty work i um, Kamara do the other stuff you have weapons ted ginn jr you now have chris olave and rashid chihito are better than what ted ginn was for the new orleans saints you still have michael thomas um maybe uh, definitely a lot older and maybe not as good michael thomas but you still have michael thomas you have a better tight end offensive line is probably not as good right now we'll see how the season progresses but it's still doing better so i think the saints want this offense to look like 2017 in order to do that you got to establish a running game which i thought the saints did kendra miller i believe spoke about that um that p carmichael came into this game wanting to establish a run the game they did that they set up play action passes that allows Derek Carr to do good. Derek Carr is really good on play action passes and over the middle. We saw more play action passes. We saw more passes over the middle. This is what this offense should look like. This is everything we dreamed of going into this season. Let the defense do what they do. Well, the offense can put up 21 to 24 points. 21 to 24 points would basically win the Saints probably 11 games this year. Like... That's how good this defense can be, but the offense has to give them some slack, has to give them some rest, has to has to reward the defense for the work that they are doing. So I think the offense is still looking for what they kind of want to do offensively, find an identity. They definitely aren't going to be a gun-slinging offense, but they need to be maybe not similar to the 49ers, but the 49ers have basically very good pieces everywhere. Brock Purdy looks like a franchise guy. But when you have Christian McCaffrey, who could be like Alvin Kamara, you have all these weapons around him. And the uh, Shanahan is setting him up for success. P. Carmichael needs to set up Derek Carr for success. Derek Carr is not going to make the best throws or every throw. But if you set him up with the right plays, you have the right players around him. There you go. Um, offensively, though, I still think the big three, Michael Thomas, Rashid Jeet, and Chris Olave, are sn- still not being used like the big three. Um there's still games. There's going to be games where one guy doesn't get any recognition in one week where that same guy comes back and has a good game. Olave might have a really good week two weeks in a row, then have two bad weeks. Thomas might have three good weeks and one bad week, whatever. It just feels like they still haven't found chemistry yet between the big three, Derek Carr and P. Carmichael. They got to get Chris Olave and Rashid Shahid, maybe more looks. Michael Thomas definitely looked like he was a big emphasis of to get the ball to him early and often in this game which is good he is a chain mover Rashid Shahid and Chris Olave are big threat guys but they still need to establish all three of them still need to establish themselves on this offense those three are probably the most consistently good thing about this offense they just need to be utilized better uh play calling and just Derek Carr needs to maybe build more chemistry and trust in those guys to win their one-on-one matchups maybe downfield over the middle whatever it is um but either way I like the offense, how it looked. Now we need to see it again this week in Houston. Protection was awesome. There's only two plays where I thought protection was ass. It was the opening drive where Adam Prentice missed the blocked block. And then there's another one. I think Carr like had to roll out or it was that big play to Michael Thomas uh, when he like kind of dove back and caught it like that. I thought that was probably the two plays that come to mind when I think the protection was bad. Derek Carr on the other sack or a few other plays held on to the ball way too long he needs to work on getting that ball out quicker maybe p carmack was calling plays that take longer to develop i know one of them was on third down and 10 so he's looking downfield so i'm okay maybe if you're out 30 to 0 it's third and 10 and you're looking downfield and you take a sack it's not that big of a deal but Derek carr even early in the game even the past few weeks he holds on to the ball way too long Needs to get that ball out quicker. This is where plays like slants to Michael Thomas or Texas routes to Alvin Kamara, option routes to Alvin Kamara. Um, Lucy plays to Michael Thomas. If you don't know what Lucy is, Michael Thomas has, he's like in the slot and has the option to run out a hitch or like run a slant. So if you play Madden, um, I'm sure you know that tight end like option route. There's no slant option, but you can either curl or like kind of run out. That's kind of what Lucy is for Michael Thomas and the Saints. So they... They still, Derek Carr needs to be better at getting the ball out quicker, and maybe these plays need to be called better to help him get the ball out quicker. Um, the final thing, one of the final things I want to touch on before we go over to the defensive side, Alvin Kamara is awesome. I mean, we missed him those first three weeks. Came back, didn't have the best game against Tampa, but Alvin Kamara, he wasn't named the team captain. I don't know if he wasn't because 
the players didn't vote for him or if he couldn't because of a, that suspension. But Alvin Kamara is the leader of, of this locker room. You have guys like Cam Jordan, Demario Davis, and Tyron Matthew. Those guys are like the leaders and the captains, but Alvin Kamara, he's the leader of this locker room. He sets the example. Guys follow him. He's the face of the franchise. Um, he may not be what he was maybe back in 2020, 2018, 2017, but he is the face of the franchise. And you could see it this whole week after the game against Tampa Bay. He, was, he said we need to have some tough conversations with Pete Carmichael. Uh, during that week, he was kind of speaking up for his teammates, the guys saying things need to change. We need to talk about who needs to be getting the ball better, how we can scheme things open, how we can revolutionize, maybe um, get the offense more modern, use modern techniques and stuff like that. He's basically speaking up for his teammates. He's the guy I'm assuming a lot of guys go to um, just to learn. Alvin's been noted to be one of the smartest guys on the team, maybe just around the league in general. Alvin Kamara is that guy. I just wanted to give him props. He's also the touchdown leader for the Saints now. He's been waiting probably two years for that. So what is that? 73. He does beat Marquez, Marquez Colston at 72. Props to Alvin Kamara. He he doesn't have a captain on his jersey, but he is the leader of this locker room. He he mentioned after the game, he was, he was in Pete Carmichael's ear about, hey, we need to get this guy the ball. Uh, they want to get this thing going. This play might work and stuff like that. And what do you know? We score 34 damn points. It works. And guess what? Even though it was all good, Alvin Kamara, after the game, said Cam Jordan missed a sack. Tyron Matthew missed a pick. Karin Thomas missed on a pass. Um, Rashid Shahid and Chris Olave both had false start penalties. This guy missed the block. This guy missed that. Even though in all this win... He's still calling guys out saying we need to be better. We left a lot of we left a lot out on the field. That's what real leaders do. There's a lot of good. He's calling them out on it. And if he didn't care, he wouldn't be calling them out. So he's the leader. He Alvin Kamara. It's weird. Back when he was a rookie, basically to 2020, I would have never thought I would have said Alvin Kamara is a captain. Just he just seemed like he was too he had too much swag to be a captain, but he, he's a leader. He's speaking up for this team. He's speaking up for the players. It's just awesome to see that kind of growth from him, uh, especially since 2017 to like now and everything else. It's just awesome to see uh, that he that he's a leader, and the offense needs that. Even though Derek Carr and Eric McCoy are team captains, I don't know if those are the kind of captains who are going to hold the players and everyone else re reliable. I don't know if that makes sense. Drew Brees held everyone reliable offense defense coaches staff members equipment managers stuff like that i don't know if Derek carr or eric mccoy are going to be those kind of guys who hold not only themselves and the players but the coaches and everyone else behind the scenes to their standards alvin kamara is that guy so i just want to give him a little shout out um the final thing i want to talk about on offense too many penalties dennis allen said today that those penalties and false starts and stuff like that pre-snap penalties need to stop a lot of that had to do because motion because the players weren't so used to motion and if you're hearing that that is just so shitty the players jumped had false starts because they weren't used to place having motion either way i'm sure it would it will get cleaned up dennis allen when the offensive line sucked he cleaned it up Dennis Allen, when the offense sucked and needed P. Carmichael to step up, he stepped up this week. When the defense last season didn't even get 10, last season's defense had seven picks, came in this offseason, fixed it. They have seven picks now in week five. So he's fixing things. So I'm assuming these penalties are going to get fixed too. I'm not too concerned about Dennis Allen and uh, how the team respects him. The team respects him, he's holding them accountable. And I think Dennis Allen will get the penalties and all that fixed. As long as Pete Carmichael continues to do his job, this offense can definitely be um, a lot better. Let's flip over to the defensive side of the ball. Man, zero. Let's, let's do a nice round of applause. I think this is the fourth. Th this is three years in a row the Saints have held a team to a shutout. Should be four, but Tampa Bay kicked a stupid field goal, so Tom Brady didn't get shut out. 2021, 9-0. 2022, Raiders. And this year, it's the Patriots. So three straight seasons with a shutout. Impressive from Dennis Allen's defense. 
And it starts with the defensive line. The Saints were able to stop the run. They are able to hold Ezekiel Elliott and Ramondre Stevenson to 45 yards on 18, or, or I guess the Patriots in general, to 45 carries. 45 yards on 18 carries, averaging 2.5 yards a carry. The Patriots still had like 70 rushing yards against the Cowboys last week, and they got blown out. So the Saints front seven did an outstanding job. Props to Demario Davis too, who on that fourth down completely destroyed Stevenson. Demario Davis is a grown ass man. I would not want to see him running at me full speed. And that's that's me being honest. But hey, that's the reason why I'm sitting on a couch talking to a camera instead of uh, playing football. And this is good for the defense too. They last week was rough for them as well. They couldn't contain Baker. They had a hard time stopping the run. They just that front seven just didn't do their job. Pete Warner didn't look the same. Demario Davis didn't look the same. Something was off about last week, and they bounced back. They needed this. This is the standard. Obviously, you can't hold opponents to zero points every single week, but this is the standard that this defense and Dennis Allen has put on this team in this defense, and it's a good standard. This is the kind of defense that we're expecting. Yeah, it's a bad Patriots offense, but anytime you hold any team at any level to zero points, especially in the NFL, it's impressive. And the defensive line is where it starts, and that's why they did so well against the Patriots. They're able to stop the run, and when they stop the run, you make Mac Jones and the Patriots, who have really no offensive weapons, one-dimensional. Guess what? Now you're going to be able to get pressure on Mac Jones, and you're going to have fun, create pressure, get sacks. Cam Jordan Tunnel Passigno got a sack before halftime to, to help get them out of field goal range. Then Carl Granderson finished that drive off with the sack. Outstanding. Carl Granderson was awesome. I think he had two TFLs and then one sack, so three total TFLs. Carl Granderson earned uh, a contract earlier this season, got off to a slow start after that. But defensive line in general didn't really do too much against the Packers or the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. This was a nice rebound game for them as well. They had two sacks. I believe there's a stat that said, like in the middle of the game, that said the Saints had pressure on like 45% of their plays. That is amazing. And on top of that, Carl Granderson got pressure and hit Mac Jones as he threw the football. Tyron Matthew picked it off and ran for a pick six and just kind of energized the team, the Saints. And it was just the Saints ran off with that since then. Or after that play, they ran off with just that momentum throughout the rest of the game. The secondary... Um, this goes hand in hand with the defensive line because they create turnovers as well. But the Saints now have ten straight games with a turnover. Props to tennis. Props to Dennis Allen's defense. I remember back in 2015, 2014, 2016, where the Saints couldn't even get one turnover in ten games. So props to them. Dennis Allen's doing a great job with this defense. Seven interceptions in five weeks after having seven interceptions all of last season. Huge upgrade. Dennis Allen brought in his guys. Todd Rantham for the defensive line. Joe Woods as the code as his the defensive coordinator and helped secondary coach and the Marcus Robertson's as well as well. They're doing an outstanding job in the secondary. Isaac Yedem, he didn't play this week, but he he stepped in for their Debo. It felt like Debo wasn't even injured. That's how good he was. Secondary is doing an outstanding job. And this is what you expect from the Saints defense when the offense allows them to rest. And when the offense scores points. This is the defense you're probably going to get because when the Saints score points, this defense is going to be energized to get the ball back and let them score more points. Defense finally gets rewarded for their efforts. Now the offense needs to continue to reward the defense for their efforts. You want to know how good the Saints defense was? The Patriots went 1 of 14 on third down. They didn't have any red zone appearances, not a single snap in the red zone. The receivers were shut down basically aside from one play. And I thought the ball maybe have come out when Marshawn Lattimore got flagged for that like helmet to helmet hit. Adebo looked good in his first game back from injury after missing two weeks. They looked good. Alante Taylor didn't I didn't hear his name all game. That's a good thing. Jordan Howden did a great job stepping in for Marcus May. Marcus May's back this week, so now the secondary is getting back to full health. We'll have to see how the injuries look this week. But they're getting back to full health, maybe just in time for the Texans and Jags to maybe get on a run. Let this build some momentum off of this win, stack some wins together. It would be awesome to see. And we're not going to talk about special teams that much, but props to Blake fucking Groupie. This dude is fucking awesome. 53-yard kick, 54-yard kick, money, two for two. 
he's really bounced back in a huge way after that Packers game. And I'm not even blaming him for that Packers loss. The Packers, if he makes that kick, the Packers still have one minute left to go. They're scoring a fucking field goal. There's no way that Saints defense being that gassed on the field for the whole fourth quarter wasn't giving up a field goal. So Blake Groupie, what is he now? Like 11 of 12 on the season. Awesome. No disrespect to Will Lutz, but I'm so happy that we went with a Blake Groupie over Will Lutz. He's younger, higher upside. You're going to have him longer. Just It made more sense to keep the younger guy. And Blake Groupie has been solid. I haven't felt really antsy about any kick he's kicked this season aside from the Packers game. All of his kicks have basically been down the middle. Maybe not that second one in, against the Patriots. Like the win was kind of turning it a little bit, but he's been he's been very good. Just wanted to give him his props. So let's talk about the trending up and trending down. So trending up, P. Carmichael and Derek Carr. Derek Carr looked really good. We'll start with Derek Carr. He looked good. I thought he held onto the ball too long at times. But he looked good, that AC joint sprain. You could tell he definitely felt better this week than he did last week. He's able to throw the ball definitely downfield. I still think the he can do better throwing quick passes. I know I've mentioned that multiple times already, but he can do better at that. P. Carmichael had a really good game, caught a lot of good plays, got play action, running game involved, motion. The one thing I will say P. Carmichael needs to address, aside from consistency, there's also too many plays where two guys were too close to each other running routes. That opening drive looked like Michael Thomas maybe could have had a touchdown on like a 40-yard play, but Chris Olave was like five yards to his left. They're too close to each other, and the guy covering Olave was able to cover Thomas and break up the pass. So there's still things that need to be fixed. This isn't a miraculous like they figured it out. Maybe they did, but we need to see consistently consistency consistently i cannot speak english today and we need to see him improve upon this game not only be consistently like this but improve upon it can you incorporate more motions can you do more creative plays that the dolphins and chiefs are doing like that shuffle play you did to foster morell need to see it better but this is a he's definitely trending up uh especially from the past week or two Derek carr looked better was able to throw passes downfield does need to be better but it feels like there's going to be one or two passes a game from him, and you're going to be like, oh my God, why did he throw that? And that's just kind of the quarterback he is when you're, that's the kind of quarterback you have when he's a bridge quarterback or someone like in the middle while you're waiting to find the next franchise quarterback. Um, but I thought Derek Carr had a solid game. Number two, Pete Warner had a, the worst game of his career, I think, last, last week against Tampa Bay. Missed tackles, read the wrong gaps, overshot tackles. Maybe he was in the wrong zones. He bounced back, had his first NFL interception. Um, he also had a, a lot of really good run stuffs. He looked really good today. He looked solid. He looked fresh. And he looked like he was ready to p- play football last week. I think, I think that was probably just an off game for the whole defense. But I feel like this game against the Patriots, he was waiting for this one all week. And props to Pete Warner. And the final one is the defensive line mainly Carl Granderson and Cam Jordan. Neither of them have really gotten sacks the past two weeks against Tampa Bay or the Packers. They come in, and they both get a sack each. I know Cam has been double-teamed. Carl Granderson didn't make too much noise uh, the past two weeks, but they both came in, made some noise. Carl Carl Granderson got a huge, uh, had a huge impact on this game, got the hit on the pick six, had two TFLs and a sack before halftime. So did Cam with the sack before halftime. So those guys are trending up as well. Trending down is penalties. They had like 12 penalties for 86 yards. Four of them, I believe, are false starts. Can't happen. You cannot have four false starts. So clean it up. And I'm confident Dennis Allen will clean it up. And I'm sure this team, this roster is too talented to not figure it out. Number two is Adam Prentice. I only noticed him on... I only saw him play two offensive plays. One of them... He lined up literally behind the left guard, James Hurst. And then he blocked the guy Cesar Ruiz was blocking. James Hurst then helped Eric McCoy on a double team and left the defensive tackle wide open to sack Derek Carr. He just wasn't helping him out. Adam Prentice has had a rough two weeks. He is injured or he went to the locker room with a knee injury. Um, I don't want to bash the dude. He's an NFL player. I'm a dude on the couch. But he's had a rough two weeks. Wouldn't be surprising if the Saints 
you know, test out fullbacks this week, especially if Prentice is injured. And the final person, I didn't want to put him on here, but um, he, he it wasn't a bad game, but he had two bad plays. Chris Olave, two receptions for 12 yards and a touchdown, had his first touchdown. That was awesome. You need to give him the ball more for sure, Carr and Pete Carmichael. But he had a play. He was looking over, caught the ball. Beautiful throw from Derek Carr, by the way. Couldn't drag the second foot. And the other play could have had another touchdown on another beautiful play. And he hit the ground and the ball popped out. He may, he needs to start making those plays. If he wants to become an elite wide receiver, a top tier guy like Justin Jefferson, he needs to be able to hold on to the football when hitting the ground. It happened against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers last season. Happened against the 49ers last season. Happened, I think, one time this past year or the so far this season. And happened yesterday against the Patriots. He needs to be able to hold onto the ball through contact on the ground. Too many times that has happened. I'm sure he will get better. He's been better on like contested physical catches. He needs to be able to control the football going to the ground. That's something he needs to work on. Don't want to shit on him. I thought I think he needs to be involved better. This team is better when he's getting the football. But he needs to be better at holding on to the ball when he's hitting the ground. And I think he needs to make those two plays. If he makes those two plays, he has like four catches, 120 yards, and two touchdowns. So we went from two catches, 12 yards, and one touchdown to that. Take it or leave it. And the final thing, before we get out of here, the player of the game, Alvin Kamara, 25 touches, 97 yards, one touchdown. Awesome. What looked awesome in pass protection, broke the touchdown leader record, and he just showed his leadership throughout the week, showed his leadership during the game, helped Pete Carmichael call plays or get in his ear about stuff, which he shouldn't have to, but it's good that he can. He was just an all-around great player on Sunday. Uh, His impact on the field was really good, but his impact off the field is just as important. So Alvin Kamara is just not even player of the game. He's, He's the man of the game. So... That's it for this episode. I know I'm a day late, but that's how it works sometimes. Uh, If you enjoyed this episode, hit that subscribe button. I'd very much appreciate it. And I'll see you guys for the next episode where we will probably be breaking down the Saints and Patriots film unless something drastic happens between then. So I'll see you guys for that one.